over time, I think musicians naturally start to gel because yeah. uh, you know they're used to being in sessions and used to improvising, and so over time they really warmed up. I, I noticed in Jimmy Page's home, uh, he had this uh, cathedral ceiling. Yeah. When you mic that or did the sound, you had the mics up in the ceiling. I no, that was um, that's a Headley Grange. It wasn't his home. He um, um, that's where they recorded the third and fourth Led Zeppelin album. Okay. And he tells a story about um, levee breaks mm -hmm. and how they got that drum sound, which it, it, they never mic'd drums like that before. And um, um, he tells a story of uh, this technician comes in and brings up a new set of drums for John Bonham to try out. And Bonham's on them and playing. And, and Jimmy walks by and says, this sounds great. Yeah. Let's record the song here. So in the hallway of this great old house, is how they recorded that. And that song and how they recorded those drums changed the way mm. music was was recorded from then on. Because sure. before that, drums were really kind of, they're, they're baffled and, and they were crushed. And, and so they were really tight. Whereas this is echoey and big and thunderous. Mm. And you hear that if you listen to Levy Breaks, and you see it in the movie, you see you're in that room where they record it and you hear how they did it. So that, that's kind of what the, what the movie is. I thought the coolest scene was when The Edge was playing by himself and then it goes out into maybe a million people yeah. in the audience. Yeah. What an impressive shot that was. Was that your idea? Well, he talked, it all comes out of, the song is about, this movie is about songwriting. And um, I had asked him, I was like, um, um, how did you do that? You know, when you guys were writing songs, how did you? He goes, well, we would just play. We'd be in a small room, smaller than this, and we'd play, and we'd have a four-track player, like anything, a kid that you would buy at a guitar center, and we'd play this thing, and, and we would listen to the tape and see if it was any good. So I said, do you have any of those original tapes? He goes, I don't know. So they went to the closet, pulled them out, and he'd play these tapes that had never been played, and he's going through them, and some of it's gibberish, and then he's rolling back, and I go, oh, this is, I think this is Streets Have No Name. And you're hearing the early sketches. There's no lyrics, just the guitar. Yeah. And you're seeing the beginnings of that song. And you start playing it, and it's building and building and building. And then you go right up. And suddenly we're in concert with so thousands cool. of people. And that, it was like, so <gasps> get, everyone who sees it gets chills down their back. <laughs> you know, it's pretty great. Yeah, it makes you realize how he influenced a complete society. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you were going to go into production, uh, having done so many great documentaries, did you think, boy, this will present a challenge, or were you just totally open to whatever came at that time? Whenever, in the middle of making every film, I get panicked. I'm pulling my hair out, I can't sleep, because you just say, I, I don't know how to do this. I've never done a documentary about music before. Maybe it'll suck. <laughs> you know, maybe. Maybe every Led Zeppelin fan will hate me because I didn't get it right. Or, um, uh, and it was the same with this one. It was like right to the end. It was like wondering whether anyone would ever watch it or like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you are known for an inconvenient truth right. as well. Yeah. And do you think this movie will trump that in popularity? I hope so. You hope so? I hope so. I mean, I'm interested in, when I make movies, I'm interested in people. Like, I was really interested in Al Gore, and I think he's a really, a hero to me. And I really wanted to find a, a different way to tell his story. And in the same way, these guys are heroes to me. You know, Jimmy Page and Jack White and The Edge, they're heroes to me. They, they, they wrote the music that was a soundtrack to my life. And so as a filmmaker, I just want to tell their story. And, you know, um, so um, I hope people will feel the same passion that I do, and they'll want to go out and see the movie. Yeah, non-guitar players as well. Yeah, I mean, what I'm finding from people is that even if they're not guitarists, they are interested in what it means to be an artist. You know, what it means to write songs, what it means to to find your voice, even if it's not a guitar. You know, what it means to, to live a creative life, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just fascinating. You know, it's just it's just interesting, like how a kid in Detroit becomes Jack White, mm -hmm. how a kid in London in the '50s becomes Jimmy Page. Right, right. Now, what are some of your other projects coming up? Well, I just did the pilot for Melrose Place. Uh, the new revamped Melrose Place comes out in September. And I'm doing a documentary now about public schools. 
the right. public school teachers and stuff. Um, that's coming out, that'll come out next year. And you did one previously as well. Yeah, right. the first documentary I ever made was about uh, teachers called The First Year. In, in LA. This, in LA, and this one's about the whole country. Yeah. Well, what brings you to that? I just love, I love teachers, and I think our public schools have been in trouble for too long. Yeah. And, I, and I think it's, it's not the priority it should be. So I'm really focusing on the families this time. Families that just want their kids to have a good education. That's wonderful. That's yeah. really wonderful. Yeah. Do you think you'll do other music uh, documentaries? I hope so. You hope so. I hope so. Who should I, if you were to make a documentary, who would you make it on? Oh, today? Yeah. Today, I would, I, uh, geez, uh, good question. Who's alive today that I love? Well, like I said earlier, George Benson, George maybe Benson. some of the jazz guys, Pat Martino. Maybe the next one. Yeah. Maybe the next one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're not as popular, right. but they're certainly great. Cool. <laughs> so, this is really fun. I, yeah. drive everyone crazy trying to get the sound that I can hear in my head to come out of the speakers. It's my voice. That is my voice. We're going there to have a chat, but it just so happens that the instruments are there as well, so who knows? I plan to trick both of these guys into teaching me all their tricks. It's going to be very interesting. When the three of us get together, what's going to happen? Probably a fist fight. This is the hall where Levy Breaks was recorded. This brings back some memories. I play a really old guitars, plastic guitars. The neck's a little bit bent, and it's a little bit out of tune, and I want it to be a struggle. This instrument was just calling out to me. 20 minutes in this store just to find the sound of the band. I love effects units. And it's very rare that he will use the same <laughs> sound in 23 songs. This is what I'm actually playing. The rest is the foot pedal, the effects, the whole thing. Might get loud for a second. We're all attempting to share something with another human being. Every night that we went on stage, it was living, totally living. Total commitment, getting across what you wanted to say. But it, it just comes from a, a creative spark, really. That family of storytellers. You're supposed to join the family, become part of it. That's why I took up the guitar in the first place. <laughs> Great! Nice. <laughs> and, you know, who says you need to buy a guitar? I apprenticed out to a lot of people when I was younger. I was an apprentice in an upholstery shop when I was a teenager. Brian Muldoon was the master of the upholstery shop, and uh, he was the one teaching me, and he played drums. Well, I guess I'll play guitar then. So when we were done with our work day, we moved the couches over and uh, set up and play in the shop. Surf and Rockabilly, Dick Dale, and trying to absorb everything. He'd pick me up from school. I'd start tearing down furniture, or ripping off fabric and cotton off uh, old chairs, gluing fabric to foam on weird curves, tearing off all the old fabric. You imagine all the stuff that's inside of a couch, M and M cereal and the baby's toys. Oh, here's how you sew a, a welt cord. Oh, here's how you sew a fly strip on the back of a decking. He exposed me to punk music, the Velvet Underground, the Cramps. Really took me under his wing to be an employee and to play music together. And I started writing songs. Kind of became a band. We got to put out a record, and we called it The Upholsterers. 